So, just come back from work. That's not a good sign. Why is it wet there but nowhere else? Found the culprit. Another one of those damn water hose drip things has popped off. This is the water fill line for this tank. Um, when I came in, this was just spewing straight out, the floor soaked. Um, luckily, it was just spewing out onto the floor, so nothing's actually damaged. It's all just run straight out. It's just a massive waste of water, which is not good. Um, but yeah, these things. I don't know what's happened. I don't know why that's happened, but that's the second time it's happened. I'll link a video up here somewhere. Um, when it happened on this tank over here, which was the tank I was quarantining my discus in, and made them really, really cold. So that's not good. So two failures in the space of, what, a month? Something like that. So something's got to be done. I've got to change this water change system. So for now, I'm just going to turn it all off. So none of them are getting automatic water changes. And then we'll review the situation and have to think about it, see what to do. So we've got the dehumidifier, that's up there running, it runs all the time. It's actually already starting to make a difference, so when I turned the water off first, this whole floor was completely flooded. Um, but as you can see, 10 minutes in, it's already starting to dry out there. And I just need to mop up the actual puddly bits, and then hopefully we'll be back to normal and disaster averted. None of the tanks got touched, so thankfully disaster averted. Well, it's now tomorrow and everything's fine, so no damage done. But what I really wanted this video to be about is... I've had a question, maybe a dozen or so times, how much does it cost to run my fish room? Um, and I've never really known how to answer, and I don't know if it's I've never really known how to answer or I've never really wanted to answer. Um, because who wants to know how much money they're spending on it? But I have invested in one of these, which is a, an energy monitor. Um, essentially, you put a little clip and it goes around the, the cable that feeds the energy into the fish room. So I've got a, uh, an isolated feed just for the fish room. So I can accurately, or I hope I can, accurately measure everything that goes through that cable. Uh, that plugs into a transmitter, which then connects to this and should be able to tell me in pounds and pence how much that cost me. So go and get that hooked up. So, out in the front of the garage. That's the fish room behind this wall here. This is just all the storage for kids' bikes and stuff. As you can see, the consumer unit's there. This is the plug that runs the fish room, which goes up there. Oh, something falling over. Up there. And there's that wire there that you can just see going behind the wall. So to get to it, you need to move all these bikes and stuff. So let's do that. Next is the transmitter. It's actually you can put in three different measure, three different clips and measure them all on the same uh, controller. And um, but that just plugs in, mounts on the wall. So when what is probably not a shock to many of you, uh, I'm an idiot and I didn't read the instructions properly. And you can't connect this thing like that. It has to go on the main uh, cable that goes into the meter itself. So it's working. And the only thing is that this is the entire house power draw at the moment, which has been fluctuating between just under a kilowatt, um, 0.8 of a kilowatt, up to 1.6 of a kilowatt. Various things have been going on, dishwasher came on, washing machine, tumble dryer, all that kind of stuff. So I think the only way I can really isolate the power draw of the fish room itself is to turn the power off at the consumer unit for the rest of the house and just leave the fish room on and then that should give me an accurate uh, reading of how many watts the fish room is drawing. Most important thing...
Yeah, so the only way that I can really get this working is to turn the power off to the rest of the house and then I'll only have the fish room itself putting on any draw and that'll only be for as long as I can handle having the power off because obviously it's a point in time, it's not a, an average over 24 hours or anything like that and even though all the filters are on and I can put all the lights on um, I can't force, well I can I force the, the heaters to come on what I'm getting there is it's not an average over 24 hours so I'm going to try and simulate the fish room under full load and then we'll come back and have a look and see what this is like. This is actually pretty cool. Um, it gives you um, in pounds and pence so you can put in what your energy tariff is, you can put in what your monthly budget is, it'll give you kind of green lines here to show you how close you are to going over your budget. Um, you get There's a dial going around here so if it goes crazy and fills up you know there's something going on there. Um, it can show you the consumption in watts, it can show you your carbon footprint, all kinds of cool things that you can set up there. So I'm not really going to make most out of a lot of these features, but it might be useful. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to get one for yourself. So now I shall go and turn off the power to the rest of the house and we'll see if we can get that working. I'm also doing this while no one else is here to shout at me. Okay, everything's off now, including the lights, including the monitor because it plugs into the mains. Mm. But luckily it's a USB plug, so I hope I've got a power bank around here somewhere. Okay, battery pack plugged in, hopefully you can see that. It's basically hovering round about between 400 and 500. Um, there's certain things I can't turn off, so I can't turn off the house alarm system because it'll go mental and annoy all my neighbours. Um, but everything else is turned off. It is a bit of an average because I have to... I can't let all the food in the freezer go off, for instance. So I'm going to give it an hour and see what the average is there and try and work it out from there and do a bit of maths. And sit in the dark and get bored. All for you. So I'm about halfway in. Um, I decided to go and turn all the lights off because obviously the lights aren't on all the time. The only thing that's on all the time are the filters and the heaters. Um, so I'm simulating the darkness to see what difference that makes. And I get that has dropped at probably about 50 watts. So it seems that I've got about 50 watts of lighting. Um, somewhere between 50 and 70 watts. And it's fairly steady now. As an update to the flooding issue, I think I've found the problem. So what I've done is I've gone round every other tank and double checked all the drip tips, like this one for instance. So I'll use this one as an example. So if you see this bump here, they're actually barbed. And what I have to do is take this the water line, which is quite firm. I have to put that in some boiling water to allow it to expand enough and bend to get the thing on in the first place. And then when it cools, it grips really tight around it. So I cannot, I cannot get this off with my own strength and uh, even with tools I struggle so I think they're all pretty secure because what I've noticed is on this one I think I made a mistake when I first set it up because see how it's cut on an angle there I think that's the problem and over time because it's not been fully secured it's just let go whether someone's knocked it, maybe we were sorting this out and moved it around, or whatever happened, that's the problem. So the rest of them are all fine. Um, so I think I've managed to get away with this. Um, I'm now marking it secure and a good system. <laughs> so I've done some number crunching. Uh, probably got it all wrong, but you can check my workings here. So I'll put it up here, you can have a look at it. Um, what you can see there is the power and water, because they're the two main costs for me in the fish room. I haven't considered things like filters, filter media, food, chemicals, all those things, which are a cost on top. Um, so this is just power and water, and again, this is just my fish room. So it doesn't include the thief tanks or the big display tank in the living room. So take it for what it is. Uh, so as you can see there, I've split it into the dark and the light, so when the lights are on and off basically. I've got the amount of hours for each of those, the average draw in kilowatt hours and the cost per kilowatt hours. These are all averages, so it might be a little bit more, a little bit less, but you can get a general idea there. 
And yeah, that's quite sobering reading, I suppose. £450 a year in power alone. Um, water, I'm on a water meter, um, so I'm paying 120 a year on water alone. For the water, the interesting thing there is I have used what I think I am using. So I've used, I've set all my drip tips for the auto water changes and things like that. Um, to give me what I think I'm using and then I've used the price on the water company's website to work that out saying that I'm paying £118 just for the fish room I think I'm way off on that and I think it's my fault I think I've um, I've not counted something quite right there in terms of how much water I'm actually using so it's not counting the weekly floods that I like to have um, so that sitting for 10 hours pissing water out all day long that's going to contribute to that as well um, I might be overusing, I might be dripping slightly more than I thought I was um, so I need to get a little bit of a, a handle on that obviously it's hard to work out water again because it includes the kids having baths it includes all the other water uses, toilets, um, cooking, drinking, whatever it might be um, so it's it's an estimation, it's a stab at a number um, yeah, I don't know that I'm overly surprised I don't know that if that's way too much or way too little I mean for for any hobby it's it's I could be playing golf and spending way more than that on green fees or something like that annually so it's a hobby it's in there it's it's not insignificant I think there are some steps that I could make to reduce some of those costs and um, looking at the, perhaps some more efficient ways of heating the aquariums looking at some more efficient ways to filter um, a better air pump for instance uh, so that's quite a power hungry air pump that I'm using for my fish room at the moment so there are lots of these things so if you've got any ideas let me know in the comments I'll consider some of them um, and I'll go away now and consider how much money I've been spending on this hobby for the last couple of years and see if I can find out some new ways to reduce that cost. But let me know if you've thought of any ways or you can see any obvious errors that I've made. Um, I more than likely have done. Um, but I hope that's been of some use to someone. Um, and yeah, I'm skint. So, you know, click subscribe, click like. Maybe I'll get some more YouTube ad revenue. Anyway, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.